Hello, I'm Pam of Healing Stars. This is the new moon, 6th of August 2013, set for London. However, I'm using the whole sign to represent the house. So on the left, there's Uranus in Aries. And Uranus is making a right angle, a powerful force for good to the new moon in Leo. This is excellent news for Aries because Leo is another fire sign. It's also really good for Leo because Uranus brings innovation. It's a pioneering sign, Aries, and creative solutions to difficult problems. Uranus always is things that come out of the blue, out of the ether. At this new moon, there is a huge opposition, a tension. You may have been feeling this. It's in Jupiter is opposite Pluto. Jupiter is now in the sign of Cancer, will be for next year. But at this new moon, it's exactly opposite Pluto, god of the underworld, up there in Capricorn. Oppositions create what they say. One party, one sector of people are opposing another sector of people. And this is occurring through the world with revolutions and people power. In the UK, the story is one of fracking, which has now hit the major headlines last week. And fracking is drilling into the Earth's core, which is Pluto, god of the underworld. But Cancer is the sign where Jupiter is exalted, which means it does very well. And Cancer is all about family, it's all about feelings, it's all about home. It's a caring, emotional water sign. There are four energies in Cancer, Jupiter and Pallas Athena, right next door, conjunct, Mars and Mercury. So Pallas is the goddess who sprang fully formed from her father's head. She was dressed in her armour. She fights for justice, for strategy. Her father is Zeus, the other name for Jupiter. So there's an ally, Jupiter has an ally, and it's feminine. And it's women who are prepared to stand, not necessarily to attack, but to stand against plutocracy, corporations, institutions. And we are witnessing that in this world at this time. The other very important goddess is Vesta. Vesta is right next to the sun and the moon today. Vesta is also called Hestia. She's the goddess of the hearth. She represents the sacred flame. There are no stories about Vesta or Hestia, but she is the home herself, the fire within, the goddess within us all. And in Leo, this is our own hearts. Also, another goddess, Ceres, now elevated to be a planet, very concerned with home, family, food and nurturing, is also there in Leo. So a lot of emphasis at this new moon, still on the sign of Cancer, and now Leo. Leo, of course, is the lion. Leo is the king of the jungle. Leo is the leader where we shine as individuals. So this creative energy coming from Uranus can offer, as I said, solutions, ideas that suddenly come in. So allowing yourself time on your own or doing something play, Leo is playful after all, where you get in touch with that creative energy within you and light that sacred flame. Venus in Virgo, an earth sign, has just opposed Chiron opposite there with Neptune in Pisces. So wounds have been coming to the surface, maybe for women especially, but also around what is Virgo representing your health, to look at your health long term. And Venus isn't happy in Virgo, she's happier in Libra where she does move towards the end of the month, she moves there on the 16th, halfway through the month, 16th of Libra. But Venus is always the goddess, always what brings us personal peace and joy. 
The grand trine, which was so much the energy of July, is still there. Saturn is still trining to Neptune very powerfully, very strongly, helping Scorpio and helping Pisces to use the energy well of Saturn, which is constructive, planning, strategy, one step at a time, and also connecting with spirit, which is Neptune, and high creativity, i.e. music, film, meditation. That's what Neptune's realm is all about. You may have noticed your influence more by what you see, what you hear at this time to either lift you up or bring you down. Some films just do, the, do that, don't they? They just bring you down. So be aware of what you're listening to and what you're watching because the energy of water is very, as you might be expecting, it, it allows things to come into your environment, what you're absorbing. The other interesting energy at this new moon is Juno in Aquarius. And Juno is the wife of Jupiter, Zeus, Hera, Zeus, Juno, Jupiter. She's in Aquarius opposite this new moon. Now, Juno in Aquarius is very much equal. So women as equals, wives as equals to their consort, their king. Interestingly enough, the Pope spoke recently about women in the church, in theology, and he has the moon and also Venus in Aquarius. And Juno, of course, would have gone across that at this time. Interesting thought. Pisces, Pisces, as I said, has still got Neptune, Chiron. This is a long-term process for Pisces. But you've still got the help of Saturn. And you've also got all the blessing of those planets down there in Cancer. Jupiter will be helping Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces through the whole year right till next July. And in doing so, because it's exalted, we will bring more optimism and hope into the world. The other energy to talk about, just to be prepared, is the square of Pluto and Uranus. This is an ongoing square and difficult through the month, Jupiter will then be exactly at the right angle now to Uranus. That occurs exactly on the new, it's actually on the full moon of around the 21st of August. We're going to have two new moon, uh, full moons in Aquarius and Leo this month, which is very unusual. Highlighting the individual, which is Leo and the group energy, which is Aquarius. Aquarius is like-minded people. One other thing to notice about this new moon is there are, are, there's no planet in an air sign. So air, of course, brings reason and logic, the ability to see things without emotion. So it's missing. And in other words, we're governed far more by fire, the passion, and by emotion, the water signs at this new moon. That will change as soon as the moon moves into Libra, but then it's followed by, on the 16th of August, Venus, of course, will then bring balance and harmony because she's then in her own sign for about three weeks. So the goddesses are talking. The feminine is very powerful at this time. It's very, very strong. For the individual, for all of us, to come from our hearts, and feminine leadership. And leadership is also about answering the calls for help. It doesn't mean everyone's standing to be a prime minister or a president. No, it means just seeing who needs my help around me and not being the person who's the friend. That's the sign of Aquarius, is to be a friend. A friend to the earth and a friend to your friends. And to focus on Vesta as well, the hearth, your hearth in your home. And maybe if you don't already have one, this is a perfect time to create an altar, 
to bring flowers into your home, to look around you and clean, tidy, that's Venus in Virgo, detox, declutter, all good things for Virgo. And notice this is time for fun. This is, of course, what Leo wants from us all. And Pan, appealing stars. Please subscribe to my newsletter. I give special offers to my subscribers so we don't miss out. HealingStars.com